Okay, so I said I will do your um, research homework um, green pen, and so here it is. Okay, so you should have done all of these. We've already had a look at uh, conflict theories and consensus, consensus theories in terms of um, functionalists and the Marxist uh, explanations. Um, we've had a, look, uh, a little look at Weber and we've had a tiny little look at um, just the different types of feminism uh, feminists there are um, and you've done research on that. So you're doing now is prepare for the dice game. So get a member of your family or friends to play this game with you, okay? I'll give you a minute to go do that. Pause this video. So, if you've got any dice at home, okay, um, I want you to roll the dice and explain a type of feminism to your family. So, if you land on uh, three, you will explain liberal feminism. If you uh, land on um, radical feminism so if you land on one you need to explain radical feminism and use the key terms to help you so as you have done this research i know you found key terms um that you could possibly use okay and have fun so in terms of other conflict theories we are going to have a look at feminism on a whole okay so feminism began uh, to influence sociology in the 1970s Okay, and so that's surprisingly late. Um, feminists argue that, and that's in my opinion anyway, um, feminists argue that in most societies, women are disadvantaged in comparison to men. Men often control key institutions in society, such as business and political institutions. They also tend to be more dominant in personal uh, relationships, and feminism has encouraged sociologists to focus much more on gender inequalities. Now, um, the last one, feminists use the concept of patriarchal uh, ideologies, which are used to, uh, in society to justify men's dominance. Now, I don't expect everyone to be a feminist, okay? You're going to believe whatever you want to believe, and you'll have your reasons for it, so long as you have reasons for it, okay? If, what I do want you to think is, if you have ever considered uh, being of another gender, really do think to yourselves now, in this society, the way both women and men are treated and who controls most of the institutions within our society. I really want you to think, would you want to be a woman? So if you were born again, or even in, in, in this life, if you were to be born, would you like to be born a woman or a girl? And I really want you to think hard about that. And I really want you to think about girls uh, and women's everyday experience. So even go into the shops, for example, and and you'll get um, women get catcalled, for example. That's illegal, by the way. Um, so you shouldn't stand on the street corner and, and call somebody, you know... Um, oh, you're so beautiful, come here, uh, give me your number. You shouldn't do that because that's you're not allowed to do that, okay? Um, and I think if, if, if a, a girl is interested in somebody, she would make it obvious. Um, but in terms of jobs, in terms of work, and I know we have a, a, a great example in our school, Mrs. Jenna is our head teacher, but even above Mrs. Jenna, who, we, who do we have? And in, in most societies, our CEOs and our, you know, we have Mr. Banks, for example, who um, oversees all of all of our schools. Um, we still have men in the most powerful positions in our societies. Um, even if you look at the difference, um, the numbers of women in Parliament in comparison to men, um, how much women are getting paid in comparison to men, even though it is illegal to 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 pay a woman less. Um, for the same job because if you're doing the same job then you should really get paid the same it's almost like saying well miss garrop you're kurdish so you should get less money um for being a teacher because you're kurdish and you know miss larkin isn't kurdish she's english so she's all you know she's from the uk or she was born there therefore she's going to get more money than you and that's not fair so even with within our own gender that wouldn't be fair so why is it fair that 
that women um, have to deal with that. And also the simple uh, role of um, men having to be the breadwinners, that's not fair. You know, you shouldn't have to be responsible for taking care of, you know, a, a woman and, you know, your children. That's not fair on you. As a man, you might not want to do that. Maybe you want to stay at home. Um, so why do you have so much responsibility? And you're taught that from a very young age. You are you are being taught that now that you are going to be the man and you are going to be the breadwinner and therefore you need to be responsible and you need to work really hard and get the good job and etc, etc. Um, and even if we were to commit the same crime, I, I if I was to commit the same crime as, let's say, um, Mr Murray, is it fair that Mr Murray is going to do more years than I do? Or is it fair that Mr Murray will get a harsher punishment than I would? And is it fair that if I was to commit the same crime as somebody who is um, black or uh, another ethnic minority, that they're going to get a harsher punishment even though we've committed the same crime? Okay, so I really want you to think about things like that when we look at feminism, okay? And feminism isn't um, the idea that women should have all the power because that's not feminism then, okay? It's about equal power, okay? So please keep that in mind. So, you will be self-assessing now, so take out your green pens, make sure you've got your research out. In terms of Marxist feminism, okay, your reserve army, okay, your free labour, capitalism, and they all produce inequality, okay. Your reserve army is your women, free labour is the women doing work at home, and that serves capitalism, and creates inequality for the woman because if she's not working then she has no experience in a workplace so let's say she was to, to want to divorce her husband for example then and she's looking for a job then she doesn't really have much to to stand on she doesn't have any really any references to to say you know this person is a good worker because she's been working at home all these years Okay, and your Marxists will will talk a lot um, about you know under capitalism women are the reserve army of labour and they excluded from from um, learning and and having a career under their belts and so they're exploited for free labour in the home. Okay, green pen. Your radical feminism and your radical um, sorry your radical feminism. <laughs> And green pen, your black feminism for me, please. I've accidentally put this up twice, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and pause, these video, pause this video as and when you need to. So, which type of feminism do you agree with the most? Now, you can not agree with any one of them, and that's absolutely fine. Then you can tell me which one do you hate the least, or which one do you not agree with, do you agree with, um, you know, the most. So discussing your families or with your neighbours, again, or with your friends, it's up to you. But I want you to start talking to people about this. Even if you go to, you know, um, your sister or your, your, your mother or your female carer at home, I want you to talk to them about their experiences in society. They might turn around and say, oh, I haven't felt any kind of inequality in my life. Um, and that's fantastic. At least you are having this conversation, okay? But then I want you to sell your feminist perspective to a family member, especially to a family member who doesn't agree with feminism at all, okay? They're the best people to try and sell this to. Um, and I want you to be prepared to justify your answer because usually when you try to sell something to somebody who doesn't want it, you have to be very uh, convincing, okay? So have a look at pesto trap, okay? This is pesto, what we have in pasta sometimes. So your position, explanation your story okay how will you would trap them and overall how will you sell this um uh perspective to them okay and if if they do um if they still disagree so if after pesto they still they're still not sold then try turn uh, so turn try uh, trap okay so you turn around another point so you give them another point okay and all of your points are already here anyway you've got more than enough um, to be able to sell your perspective, okay? Now, as a homework, 
you are preparing for year 10, okay? And every lesson is preparing you for year 10. And every lesson is preparing you to that one, to that step closer to you, do your GCS, doing your GCSEs, okay? So both Ms. Del Bergo and I await your extended piece of writing expressing a critical view of the social world around you, okay? So I want you to choose an approach, a sociological approach. Um, and which one do you see yourself agreeing with the most? And I want you to be able to justify your answer. So this is more about failing self because I do... As you are doing your GCSEs now, we do need to see extended piece of writing from you, okay? And if at any point you are confused or you would like more help, just send us an email and I will send you out um, almost like um, a, a guide on how to write, okay? But I do want you to start writing extended piece of writing because you will have 12 mark questions and what I don't want you to, to do is stress and panic and be all distressed over a 12 marker because you've never practiced a 12 marker before, okay? So I'm more than happy to send you sentence starters or um, essay strips for you so long as you ask me, okay? So long as you tell us because we can't help you if we don't know there's a problem, okay? Um, Hopefully these lessons have been informative and helpful to you um, in terms of consensus and conflict theories. And hopefully feminism isn't this, um, you know, horrible word and, you know, because we do sometimes prejudge certain things. And, you know, we do prejudge um, Marxist theories sometimes when, when we, we look and we just think, oh, you know, not everybody who's poor isn't going to always stay poor or, or it's their choice because they're not working. And, but remember, we're looking at society as a Marxist on a, on a macro level. OK, there are loads of people who are like that, who maybe don't, you know, are happy in the situations they're in. And they don't want to work harder and go up the social ladder. They might not want to, but we're not looking at micro level um, society, okay? As a as a as a mark as Marxist thinkers or you know from a Marxist perspective, that's not what we do. So make sure when you are coming um, and when you are writing your extended piece of writing, you're not telling me about personal experiences because that's not going to be very helpful for you to get your marks. Okay, we're, we're, when you are doing, um, when you are studying Weber and when you are talking from Weber's, Weber's point of view or, for example, Howard Becker's point of view and we talk about, you know, labelling theory, yes, you individually are going to be labelled, you know, depending on if you speak a certain way or etc, etc. But that, that then relates to all people who speak in that certain, uh, that, that certain way. So that's a micro level study so you won't need to worry about that okay until we get to that 